five scriptural ingredients to fruit bearing. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 126, mm -hmm. verse six, it says, he who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. So the first uh, uh, ingredient to fruit bearing is witnessing, number one. And that is, it says, he that goes forth, witnessing, okay? The next is compassion. It says, he that goes forth weeping. So that's number two, is compassion. Number three is the word of God. He that goes forth weeping, what bearing precious seed? The word of God. Number four is positive joy. It says, bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. And number five, results assured. Results assured. Bringing his sheaves, plural, with him. Hallelujah. So the first uh, ingredient to fruit bearing is witnessing. The second one is compassion. The third one is the word of God. The fourth one is positive joy. And the fifth one are results assured. Mm -hmm. Those are said that he, they shall be known by the fruits that they bear. Mm -hmm. Here are the five ingredients to fruit bearing. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that Christ is the source of salvation. But if you're a, a novice, if you're someone that just came in and you're someone who has been talking to somebody and they trying to sell you on Christ, uh, what would be the requirements of a savior? What would be the requirements of a savior if you said Christ is your savior? Well, number one, here are the requirements. He must be able to save. He must be able to save. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lived to make intercession for them. So he must be able to save. And number two, he must be willing to save. He must be willing to save. The Bible says that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, mm -hmm. as some count slackness, mm -hmm. but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Mm -hmm. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. And Revelation chapter three, verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and dine with him and he with me. So those are the two requirements of a savior is that he, may, he must be able to save and he must be willing to save. Nope, you can't say that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Muslims, but Muhammad is not able to save nor will he will because he couldn't save himself. I'm sorry Buddhists, Confu uh, 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 Confucius wasn't able to save, nor was he willing. He couldn't save himself, mm -hmm. nor could Buddha. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, uh, 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 Hindus, uh, uh, Harry Krishnas and all, not able to save. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the power to save. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to talk about the different methods that God uses in salvation. But let's get this straight. That salvation is always grace through faith. Grace through faith. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not of works. Lest anyone should boast. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. It goes on to say. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Mm -hmm. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Mm -hmm. 
Titus chapter 3, verse 5 says, Not by works of righteousness, mm -hmm. which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us mm -hmm. through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about grace. Not just any kind of grace, but saving grace. Now, grace is actually defined as the unmerited favor of God. Now, this is an attribute of his character by which he acts on our behalf to our benefit with no merit on our part, okay? So now with grace, it says your salvation is what? Grace through faith. But faith, we have to have what they call believing faith, okay? So faith is that attribute in man, okay? Imparted by God, which causes him to respond to God's grace, receiving as truth the promises of God. Mm -hmm. So here it is. The Bible says that without faith it's impossible to please God. So here it is. That believing faith is blind faith. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to have enough faith in God to know that you're saved. I'll give you a better example. When, you, when we sit in chairs, we don't even think about whether that chair is going to hold us or not. We just pull it out and sit in it. That's faith. That's, uh, that is believing faith. You don't even think about it. So that's what it is. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Mm -hmm. So God has given each one of us a measure of faith so that as we go through certain things that our faith increases. Even when he was, when he was here on earth in, in, in the form of Christ, when he was with the disciples, he always said, O oh, ye of little faith. Mm -hmm. He never said they didn't have any faith. He said that their faith was just small. But a lot of people misinterpret that scripture that all you need is just faith of a mustard seed. Mm -hmm. But that little mustard seed faith, if it gets watered through the trials and tribulations, if anybody knows about mustard seed, it grows into a big, huge uh, 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 tree. Mm -hmm. You know, so God wants us to increase our faith. So that's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Because believing faith leads man to the acknowledgement of and repentance from sin and the acceptance of the provision of salvation in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So with believing faith, it, it, it leads us to go before God and to ask him for forgiveness mm. so that we can move forward and give us the things that we need here to, to, to get us ready for eternal life. Mm. So without that believing faith, it says it's impossible to please God. Mm. Now, understand, salvation we know is always grace through faith, mm. right? Always grace through faith. But understand, salvation is always by the blood. The blood must be innocent, shed, and applied. The Bible declares in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, and according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without the shedding of the blood, there's no remission of sin. Understand this, saints of God, that if Christ had not died for us and shed his blood, there will be no remission of sin. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to believe in the resurrection, uh, in the um, in, 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 in the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Because through the blood, through the blood that was shed, we're able to go before the throne of God and ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. The Bible goes on to talk about, now, we know that in the New Testament. So in the Old Testament, 
they use the blood of a of an unblemished lamb. Mm -hmm. We know that that the it says it says in Leviticus chapter seventeen verse eleven that for the life of the flesh is in the blood, mm -hmm. and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. Mm -hmm. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Mm -hmm. So once a year, now this is how this is how uh, when I say crazy, how we how we take our salvation and our relation with Christ for granted. Because in the Old Testament, they can only go before God once a year. Once a year, they had to bring, they had to bring a, a, a unblemished ram goat to the altar. And they had to you know, go through the ritual, you know, and, 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 and kill the lamb and, and the blood. And that was for all the sins of the whole year, which was atonement. They still practice what they call a day of atonement. Mm -hmm. Now God gave the blood as an atonement for the soul. Mm -hmm. Now the word atonement, which is kafer in Hebrew, K-A-P-H-A-R, K-A-P-H-A-R, it means to cover or to pass over. Mm -hmm. So in Egypt, the Hebrews observed the Passover mm -hmm. in the blood of the lamb, which was applied to the lintel and side posts of the door. Mm -hmm. So when the death angel passed through the land, whenever he saw the blood, he passed over, sparing that home of the death of the firstborn. Mm -hmm. Understand, now, you could really get a deeper understanding of that whole uh, Passover and the atonement of the blood is, uh, is found in Exodus uh, chapter 12, verses 1 through 29. It gives you a deeper understanding. Mm -hmm. But the Passover lamb, was a type of Christ, which is talk about the, the Bible talks about the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. Now, atoning for sin or passing over represented the forbearance of God, meaning He was withholding His divine wrath. Mm -hmm. Okay, looking forward to the sacrifice of Christ, the Lamb of God, once and for all time. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Bible says in Romans chapter three that whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith mm -hmm. to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sin.